I am Isander. And I am Coda. And today we're going to be talking about Mr. Steal Your Girl, the Gene Stealers, in all their glory. And it is an episode you have committed to so much it upsets me. Uh, if my jeans were going to get stolen, I wanted extras to have around. Jean shirt, jean jacket, jeans, jean shoes. Jean shoes. I'm surprised no jean socks or jean gloves. Again. I, th- I think I would. No jean ball of cloth. You couldn't breathe through a jean ball of cloth. <laughs> and suffocating yourself with extra steps. If we do jean stealers too. No, we're not doing that. Again, <laughs> I just wanted extra jeans to have around just in case mine got stolen. Ugh, whatever. As always, be sure to check out the Patreon where you can get a bonus episode every single week. That's right. For all of you who have finished and binged everything here, there is quite literally twice as much somewhere else, as well as access to the Discord, a bunch of other perks, monthly live streams, and you help us keep the show running. And you can do all of that by heading on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. This week, I will be covering the different variants of the Gene Stealers because it's not just a human problem. It's not just a human problem. Chaos has our hands on them too. (laughs) (laughs) And that is always fantastic. So if you want to check that out, head on over there. Chaos Gene Stealers sounds awful. They worship Nurgle. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's awful, awful. That's bad, bad. We'll get to that later. Bad, bad, not good. We will get to that later. So now we'll start with stuff that is completely not canon anymore. Not canon anymore. Mm, Completely relevant. It does not pertain to the Gene Stealers at all, pretty much. Uncanon stuff. But that's important. If you haven't been watching, you will know that I quite like old 40K, um, because it's funky, if we had to put it to a word. Uh, It's one of my favorite things about it. It has existed in a time period with such good recording that we can see all of it. Everything. Because much like most people out there, 40K has not always had its act together, let's say. (laughs) It has had some weird period. You know that one image of Homer Simpson, like looking really hot for Marge, and then the camera pans behind him and it's like a hundred rubber bands. It's a hundred paper clips holding back his extremely loose skin. Yes. 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 40K is like that sometimes where you look at it and it's like, whoa, this is a property that's very interesting with hundreds of books and the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. And is that Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau? Who is, in fact, I found this out recently, the first Inquisitor. Not any. The, the first. first. He was the guy who first got that paperwork, I think. <laughs> and that's a fact that they could... I need to get a first edition Rogue Trader book so I can like properly read through it and I'm not dealing with kind of shoddy scans from the internet. Um, what? I need to locate one because there's some stuff floating around in there that I, I would like to read. <laughs> Dude... <laughs> Oh, it's 40k is so much fun. Dude. Oh my god. Nowadays. What the hell? The Gene Stealers have been very conveniently folded into the Tyranid Vanguard, right? They are the first portion of any successful invasion and serve many, 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 many points. We'll get to later. Don't worry about we, that. We, ta- we, yeah. talked, we talked about this in the. It, we kind of uh, brushed over it in the Tyranid video. Kind of. There's a lot more to it, actually. Really? This is why I love so much detail. There's there's more to it in than, the Tyranid video. The, the I mean, jeans, I figured there was more to it, but like, what other sketchy you, okay, shit are they doing? This is why I love 40k because there's a whole Tyranid video you should watch. It's very good. I quite like it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. And there's a whole Tyranid video, and like maybe ten, no, five minutes of it are Gene Stealers, right? If you zoom in and see everything they did to make that happen, it's going to be a whole hour in and of itself. And then you could zoom in even further, and it's like, oh, my God. It's one of those. 40K, you can just keep going and going and going. There's so much detail. It's one of those because, infinite fractal videos. Yeah, pretty much. I love it. Uh, so that's what they That's what they do nowadays, and that will come in later. Back in old, old, old 40K, it was just the a ancient texts. weird moon cult. Weird moon cult. Just a thing that was happening in the corner that they were all blue and bald and quite concerning. But it was one of those things where, listen, 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 that sucks. The Eldar suck harder, okay? So they We will deal with that later. They weren't a Tyranid thing yet. No, it was just a problem on a world somewhere that the Imperium said we will fix this at some point. There's just a weird blue man group running around just doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, they were just hard ripoffs of the alien from it, 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 Alien. Uh, um, I mean, it, except blue. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, they even did the whole uh, xenomorph thing where they plant an egg inside you and just poof, out the chest in the most visceral way imaginable. Yeah, I really hate those scenes. I, I love that body scene. Body horror makes me upset. I love that scene because it is genuinely commendable how good they got it to look at that time. Because think about it. Today, it'd just be like a bunch of CG everywhere. But oh, that's and it mostly disgusting. practical. Yeah, practical effects. It's the same reason why I love the old Jurassic Park. The T-Rex has like two minutes of screen time it's total. The reason, it's, the reason man. Why, it's the reason why I can watch the original uh, The Thing, and it actually disgusts me to the point where I need to leave the room for a little bit because I'm going to throw up if I don't. I haven't seen The Thing, but I need to. It's all practical effects. It's all body horror, and it's all... Mm, yeah, um, you're not gonna like the old Gene Steelers then, because it's that's their whole gimmick. Yay! Um, I mean, they would slash you with a weapon, and there's a chance that pff, chest burster would come out. Ick. I, I mean, later on, like, oh, you sur you survive a cut in battle six months later. Congratulations! Oh, they, do a, they do a full well, the sans face hugger, but they do a full body horror thing. Yeah, yeah, pr mm -hmm. pretty much. Forty uh, K decided to grow up a little bit. Uh, it, Honestly, kind of for the better, because the logistics of this moon cult did not really hold up upon closer scrutiny. Uh, How do you if, mean? If you look at it, this is real, ba this is genetics 101 here. Uh, the moon cult reproduces with other species, right? With each successive cycle, there is less of them in there. Until eventually, you get to the point where it's like, you're just basically human now. You're just predisposed to being bald. So, and blue. So basically, a man whose mother's father went bald. That's it. That's all you were. Nothing special. You're just the blue man group. Yeah. You right. don't even get. You don't even get the Vegas res residency. None of that. You just were a weirdo. No blue Vegas guy. residency. No plumbers, tube drums. No weird choreography. You just you you're just blue yeah. and bald. Yeah. Uh. So it 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 was kind of a problem that you could not make any more. Uh, true gene stealers past a certain point. Uh, so the way this was fixed is they had this leech thing they got it on with, and that was the only way they could ever make a real gene stealer. Yeah, it's not canon anymore, but that was a thing back in the day. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's not what they are anymore, thank God. They kept a lot of it. They still have razor sharp uh, melee weapons that will cut through space marines like butter. That is a thing. They are always universally horrifying in melee combat. Spa space marines. Yes. And they hit them with the full katana tatami mat routine. Yup. Uh, I told you, we didn't even begin to touch on the gene stealers. F frightening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so cool. They're so much fun. I just, uh, I just, how much, <laughs> no, how much force and how much of a swing would you need to make to I, cut a space I cannot out? tell if it is sheer force doing it or sharpness of the object. Because space marines are very heavily armored, they're very thick individuals. At some point, it's not just the... <laughs> at some point, you vex me. At some point, it's not just the sharpness of the object we're dealing with here, but rather the sheer force behind... Have you gotten your... Have you gotten your... Are you done yet? <laughs> Finished? No. <laughs> a bit like fridges, man. The, no. <laughs> All of them. Look the, at the Space Marine trailers. The image, the image that immediately came to mind, was around Doom Eternal. There were a bunch of stupid meme images that <laughs> were circulating. One of them being uh, the Doom Slayer looking up at like um, a, a, a gore nest, and he's just posing dramatically with the Crucible Sword in hand, and his ass is out. <laughs> things you use the internet for it's it's a tool meant to <laughs> let you the first, access that was the first image any that came and to mind. every bit of information you could want this alexandria is, is at your fingertips a space marine and you ran to that section a space marine looking up at a um uh uh tyranid hive queen with chain sword in hand aye, just ass out aye, aye, aye. <laughs> full armor just ass out yeah, yeah, sure, sure, why not? Um, so they can still do that to Space Marines, I suppose. Um, the weird leech thing is gone, and they're now in your walls, in your walls, in your walls. That's kind of the whole thing. Um, so they, they, stole the, they stole the Night Guards thing? Night Lords, excuse me. Oh, 
the comments are going to be rife for that one. I'm no, sorry, they Lord, didn't, please don't. They didn't necessarily don't be do in that. My walls. The, the real best way to describe them is by their own words, um, which you look at images of the gene stealers, it's not exactly Shakespeare. But you read about the gene stealers, it's a little bit of William's work. I'm not going to lie. They have some fantastic quotes. They describe themselves as the vanguard for the inevitable. Cole, that is hard. And that's just one of them. That's giving... I will scatter more throughout this video. They are so confident. That's giving Mass Effect Reapers quotes. Yeah, pretty much. I love that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now Nowadays... The, the best way you could really look at them is by looking at the various generations because each generation kind of does a different thing. It's it's like the life cycle of a bug, basically. And it kind of does the same thing on every planet it goes to, so that's the way we're going to take a look at it this time, okay? Another timeline video, kind of. Kind of. It's more like a life cycle of an insect. A bug's life. A bug's life. A bug's life. Yeah. Uh, so Gen 1 is pure gene stealers. You could not miss these guys even if you were blind. I'm talking Stevie Wonder courtside seats could tell. Which, by the way, I've ne never mind, I'm not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> maybe he just really wants to hear the game. I don't know. Um, but, no, they, they are full bore, like, spare limbs, purple skin, just scales everywhere, sharpened teeth, claws, they reek, they slobber. You look at them, you're like, oh, yeah, you're definitely a Tyranid. Like, Clearly. It, it, clearly. They're, you are not human at all. Not in any sense of the word. That's a good thing, though. Because you'll never see them. Gen 1, of, if, if, if you spot a Gen 1 gene stealer, it's lost. Game over. They've lost. Oh. They, <laughs> mission mission failed. <laughs> it, it's, it's that do or die. If you see one, it's, it's over. No chance. No, no chance at all. So they, We they, already know the invasion's coming. Yeah. Get off my so world. So they, they tend to keep, especially if that world has like an Inquisitor on it or like a, oh. a single space marine who's, eh, what was that? <laughs> that 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 poor that. I, I i love space marines sometimes because when when space marines have two modes they're either very 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 unfathomably cool or hyper fixated on their jobs and so you'll either have the best swordsman ever who can cut through anyone with a single glance or i've seen those three pixels before kill it now <laughs> and if you don't trust him those three pixels will become a serious problem so Gen 1, it is imperative that they just hide. There's no run. There's no, I mean, there's it, run, hide, fight. It's just run and hide. Everyone there's no, hide. There's no fight. No fight. Um, they keep mostly to the dark. They are the New York sewer gators, effectively. That's what I was just about to say. It's, they, it's the kind of thing where, hey, did you see that last night? I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Probably like a local myth or something. The, these are the these are things that you'd see on like found footage films that are just like a, a blur. Like, y yes. Oh, did you hear about the Dover Demon or some shit? Hey, like, oh, did you hear about the the Wendigo sighting? Exactly. Exactly. The kind of thing where your average Joe just goes, ah, that's probably not real. Your CIA agent goes, what? You saw what? You saw, hmm? Excuse me? Hmm? Uh, so the way these guys recruit is um, they will kind of just hide and lie in wait and until they find a single victim alone. So, you know, don't walk around alone at night, I suppose. Right. And from there, you'll get grabbed. And, um, I, I, I assume that... The fun part starts now here, and and by fun I mean uh, not fun at all. Like the full body horror, body snatchers, the thing action happening. There's a face screaming on the ground right now. The face screaming comes later. Um, awesome. Do you remember the face huggers from Alien? <laughs> so I think that's how I, we're gonna do I, this. I'd, I'd I'd imagine yeah. Or in Stranger Things, the way the mind flare gets people, where it just know. yeah, and then just yeah, pretty same premise. Uh -huh. Same basic premise. Uh, for the most part, actually, if you've watched Stranger Things, they kind of operate the same way. I'm Where the, a weird meat puppet attaches tendrils to your face and then starts plopping eggs down your throat or something? It kind, instead of all that, it's just a really long, very barbed tongue. Mm. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it splices your genes with theirs. Hmm. Yeah, apparently this one's dodgy. I'm not too sure. I think that's how we uh, bacteria just swap genes, like actually, like a weird like, tendril just like sticks out, grabs I another. Think it's like horizontal ge genetic 
I, oh, it's been a while since I've taken any classes on this. <laughs> Horizontal genetic transfer, I think. It's just like, barb in you, quick splice is what I know, this is what you know. Moving on. Mm. Real cordial. Very polite. Well, one of the one of the cells in this operation did not consent to this action, so yeah, I, yeah. I would not call it cordial. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that later. Uh, <laughs> another similarity they have with the mind flare is they they do have it's it's not one big meat puppet kind of a thing. It, it, they do have one gene stealer above all, and it's quite literally just whoever was oldest. If that one happens to die, who was second oldest? Okay, cool. He's in charge. Okay, it's, it's actually it's almost orc levels of organized. Where <laughs> who this, is the biggest gene stealer? Yeah, here? well, actually, it it the oldest will become the biggest. We'll get to that later. You're getting ahead of yourself. But it's not size based. It's age based. It's it's like the royal family, pretty much. Of who's the oldest? Okay, who's the second oldest? Moving. On. Oh, yeah, no, because they have weird rules of succession. It's not technically the second oldest who goes. It's a kid of. <laughs> It's age-based, okay? It's age-based. So if you're 89 and he's 88, if you die, the 88-year-old takes charge and the 87-year-old and the 86-year-old and it just goes on and on until we get to the resident toddler. Imagine Hopefully if, we never do. Imagine if the royal family was uh, size-based instead of age-based. <laughs> the implications behind that what did that snap you in half no the implications because like the moment charles marries diana she'd grow taller <laughs> and, me and, me megan <laughs> and megan markle would have gone from a regular sized person to being slightly taller it's just the implications of it is like, this is this why is this why <laughs> Queen Elizabeth passed? She was shrinking. Oh my god. Um. Oh my god. And then and then there's just the concept of Big Elizabeth. May God rest her soul. There's just so much to unpack. And then Big can, Elizabeth. No, no, no. It's it's the premise of Charles walking around in public, and everyone finds out about the Queen's passing because he just got like two feet taller. <laughs> He's like, he's like in a Tesco grabbing bread or something. Boom, head bumps through the ceiling. Oh, no. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are going to make this episode so difficult to get through. Why did that grab you and snap you in half? If, if, I'm sorry. That if was you, a throwaway joke. Yes. Why did that grab you by the spine it is and because snap the, you in half? It is because style? The, the, the royal family does not occupy as much headspace as it does in England. So it's just if you if you grew up <laughs> if you grew up with British news and you just saw how like often you saw the royals, the implications behind it get really weird really fast. Do you think? Do you think like um. <laughs> Uh, the BBC would have like a running like size counter for each of the oh, a running height chart for sure guaranteed guaranteed um, <laughs> uh, anyway after after you get gotten by the gene stealers <laughs> oh Jesus uh, after you get gotten by the gene stealers you will usually black out pretty much immediately after I'd probably black out during that process it sounds painful uh, I don't know if it is, uh, but you you will black out and you will wake up with no memory of of that specific instance. Okay. You you, you if for you it'll be like full mind flare. Yeah, pretty much. You it'll be your day. Yada yada yada. Oh, weird! I blacked out and crashed on the side of the road. Why am I here? How did I get here? I don't know, but I gotta call nine one one. I must have fallen asleep while driving. Um, but then as the time goes on, you have this sudden, just visceral urge to have kids. Like the whole nine start a family, and I don't mean like oh you know like one kid two kid. I'm talking like you know the old the photos of like old families <laughs> back in the 1900s <laughs> with like dad mom fifteen kids because five of you are going to dysentery, five of you are going to war, the other five of you well I don't even know what's gonna get you but you something have might. an entire school room in uh, in your household. It, yeah, it, it, there is no nursery. Your nursery is just the barn effectively, like. <laughs> It, it was that, it's that level of, I just need to have kids. I just need to have kids. I just need to have kids. And when you do that, 
uh, you will also infect whoever you get in contact with. You won't have a five foot tongue, but you, you will inadvertently. I don't know if it's you or the kid, but something there will mess with them. If uh, this, this, this just <coughs> in, uh, Tyranids, STI? Okay. They, they can't remember kids. Don't be silly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, the kids you happen to have. Be safe. Put on a coat. Yeah. We'll, we'll go on to be Gen Gen 2. And they are a face not even a mother could love. Uh, no, that's not a joke. There is a there is actual effort that goes in. Uh, like the, 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 the cult will put in actual psychic effort to ensure that the way you view... Gen 2 is not accurate because if you're able to actually look at them, oh God, e even though you're brainwashed, you'd see right through this. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it is rough. It is like the beta test of your genes mixing. They are effectively animals. <laughs> they are slobbering. They are moving around. There's spare limbs sticking out everywhere. It's, it's real rough. Mm -hmm. It's very rough. Gen 2 is not very useful in a traditional sense. They're great bodies, don't get me wrong. If you happen to stumble upon the cult, you will get swarmed by these things and they will kill you. Frightening. Yeah. Very effectively, but they're not right. I, yeah, yeah. That uh, boy ain't right. That boy ain't right. <laughs> they do serve a very important purpose, though, because their genetics will go on to make Gen 3. And the reason Gen 2 matters so much is because you can tweak Gen 3 for special roles. <clears throat> how, how so, so Gen 3 it? is effectively a sack of genes and they just fucking swing it around bam Gen 3 comes out and Gen 3 is kind of whatever they need um, <clears throat> it's less of a slobbering mess and can speak some of the local language less of uh, less of uh, the slobbering mess L again this is it's still like a genetic sack we're swinging around here okay it's not the most accurate Which thing but but this is really where the it's it's <clears throat> getting it's they're, they're hitting their stride uh you will see a bunch of gen threes that come out really really strong or really really fast this is when the cult is just kind of playing around to see what is what are the limits of this new batch of code that we have what can we really crank out and these guys are very useful because okay cool well the cult needs more iron let's make 10 guys with five arms who can all bench Arnold's body weight with a single hand. Hmm. Suddenly a fantastic, la the labor force sorted out immediately. The defense force sorted out immediately. Scouting force sorted out immediately. You have a very effective, though rudimentary army. Okay, I see these guys' <laughs> strategy. I, I'm starting to see this. Yes, at this point, the tree's starting to take roots. It's pretty hard to get them done. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you have to remember, this, these are not happening in a nice, neat order. Um, there's still some Gen 1s snatching people up and making them into Gen 2s, while Gen 3s are still being cooked up. So this is all happening at the same this time. Is, this is this is not congruent. This is just like... <laughs> it's more like one thing will happen, and then another branch will happen, and it'll keep happening concurrently, and then another branch will happen, and it'll keep happening concurrently, and it's this just... Un and it's a snowball. I'd imagine, I'd <laughs> imagine if, if you've seen, like, uh, time lapses of, like... Uh, 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 bacterium uh, cultivation yeah, yeah. with the, them in the Perfect the analogy. agar uh, um, uh, uh, petri dishes where they you have a, a dot and then it starts to grow and then you have another dot and then it starts to, and a dot and then I'd imagine that's are, how it goes. That is the perfect analogy. That's fantastic. Um, Gen four will come next, and they are where it starts getting sketchy because they can blend in now. They can speak the language competently, and they can do outward recruitment. They have recruitment offices? Yeah. Do, what, do they just <clears throat> sit outside of school saying, hey, you can buy a Camaro? Well, oh, why must you do this to me? Um, no, the, the Gen 4 represents a very big leap because they go from... They have a new form available now because before, their previous version of recruitment was, whoops! Stepped on the wrong sewer grate there, buddy. Ever wonder what five foot of tongue tastes like? Yeah, it's it's horrific. It's not great. These guys are subtle. They're not fully like hard recruiters. It's more like this guy you'll meet at the bar, dimly lit at night, and he's just talking to you and he's real friendly, you know? 
or it's um this new guy at your local TCG just kind of joining in for games. Again, dimly lit, dimly lit, dimly lit, or wrapped up. Or the sales guy who says, hey, uh, we have all this food that's going to go bad in the evening. If you come back then, we can give you a hell of a deal. Loan sharks. N it's ju it's not quite loan sharks. It's people who genuinely seem nice to you, but always want you to meet them at a secondary location. Never <clears throat> go to a secondary location. Yeah. <laughs> N never never ever um <laughs> as with every generation beforehand there's some fine tuning that goes here so it goes from rather kind people who kind of blend into society if you don't look too hard or they're a bit too clothed to just um very very competent bodyguards that far exceed gen 3 and can match eldar in combat yeah, Gen 4 gets funky. I told you. Whoa. Yeah, and not just any Eldar. It's the ones who guard those shrines we mentioned last episode. Whoa. <laughs> it's a hell of a leap, isn't it? Whoa. To their actual final, the height of Gen 4, which is kind of just terrorism. I mean, it, it's slight. We have to take a slight detour at this point to explain because a lot. so far we've only really covered the more forceful ways to get you to join their after school program or the more one-on-one -on -one ways to get you to join the after school program but as you can imagine that's not a good way to get the ball rolling you know so because for every one recruit you have you need to send one recruit out to get them kind of limits things you want for every one you get two or three or four or five yeah, that is a it much speeds more up ideal. that process <laughs> now now you've got like a, a you're cubing it or, or and especially when you consider hive cities can have billions of people in them going door to door is not gonna cut it, it um, it's it's just not yeah, an effective the, means of recruitment. The, there's there's no way that you can have the gene stealers just out there going two by two, door to door, 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 door. Yeah, no, they can't do that. So they have to turn to manipulation to get what they want. Specifically, looking for the downtrodden. <clears throat> yeah, it is a cult. And uh, ooh, it is a cult. Oh, they go through the whole playbook. They will offer you a way out. They will tell you, "I can fix all your problems, and if I can't fix them, I will make it easier for you." Things are terrible right now, and it's that thing's fault once we deal with that one thing things will go back to the way they should be the way they were so this is literally where we hit the cult part of gene stealer cult this is where it begins this is where it begins it can even be as innocuous as just interest-based clubs next time you go to commander night there's that new guy there again but he tells us he's got a buddy who has this great space we can use instead we should all go there and it's like you chose the pictures it's pretty sick dude's got a pool that's pretty tight Let's go there. It's or, or the Warhammer tourney is being moved across town to this other secondary location. Never go to a <laughs> secondary location. Because you guys have always wanted to hold a tournament there, but management's always been kind of awful to you. But suddenly they've had a hell of a change of heart. Thanks to that one new guy. He's super tight. Let's go. I even brought a van for us. <laughs> a, a, a van? <laughs> it's sketchy and it comes with a smile on its face. If I see a panel van with a smile on it, a smiley face on it, mm -hmm. no, no. <laughs> and, and, but, Run. but this does not always work because some Imperial worlds are really well run. Not every world has such easily exploitable weaknesses. If you want to find the downtrodden, you have to have downtrodden. Most, oh. imper most Imperial worlds have so many downtrodden. Oh my God. <laughs> this is not a normal problem. Let look, me be clear. Look at a hive city. Yeah, let me be clear. This, this is not a struggle for them normally. However, it can happen. There are some places where it's effectively governed. Or there are paradise worlds where, why are you wearing a turtleneck? It's 90 and we have 17 hours of daylight forever. Dude, Dude, put some board shorts on. Every beach here is a nude beach. Mm -hmm. Why are you wrapped up in bandages? Or or it could be just as simple as you landed on a planet and yeah, there's quite a bit of squalor, but there's an Inquisitor watching from orbit. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting anything started with them looking. It's literally <laughs> got Sauron's eye looking all over the oh, place. Oh, yes. This is when the Keller Morphs are created and they are a figurehead. They are the... This is when... The cult has it down. 
Because this whole time, if you've noticed, they've been experimenting, they've been learning, they've been tweaking. It's to create a Keller morph proves A, that they've mastered the genetic code they're borrowing from because a Keller morph is faster, stronger. It is outright terrifying and can beat Marines. So we're hitting like Xenomorph Queen level. A Keller morph is horrifying. On top of that, it also proves that they've mastered the populace's psyche because a Keller morph will always look like the hero they want. Always. Hmm. It's, it's, you know, the way people romanticize like the cowboys on the old west who fought the law and won, right? Or like the mafia back in the day, rum runners. As it turns out, your average Joe likes it when someone sticks it to the man. Doubly so if the guy doing it is one of them, you know? Yeah. And so they, they will, they, it, for them to put out a Kellermorph, it will be a folk hero effectively built perfectly to the tolerances of that world so if your world is you know pretty stringent they wouldn't really take well to a guy with three arms clint eastwood will arrive just with actual clint eastwood and there's nothing you can do about that clint eastwood with three revolvers no two again the, if the world is super duper intolerant right mm. if this is a hive city with a sludge everywhere and yeah people just have six fingers sometimes then a killer morph will come in with four arms <laughs> Because it's like, look, all of us have been downtrodden for having these limbs. He has four extra arms and he's using them to spite them. And we can do this. Then we get four revolvers? Yeah, and then you get four revolvers. Yay. There's actually one in Magic who I think has three. That's kind of awesome. He's, he's really, That's kind of really he's awesome. He's really cool. Um, and so this this figurehead serves as like, oh my God, how is he? if he can do it, so can we. And so it'll give them something to strive to, something to try and find. And this figure will always have the symbols of the cult hidden in little ways on them. And so they'll go, okay, so if I associate with that, I can become like him. And so they will seek out the cult and then come to them. <laughs> and it's so funny. At the point Keller Morphs are being deployed, th th this is pretty much over. It's done. Because, oh, I didn't even mention the most important thing. They've mastered the genetic code, they've mastered the psyche, and they have effective manufacturing. Oh, yeah, it's over. Because the Keller Morphs, I almost forgot this, the Keller Morphs are not just armed with regular, you know, revolvers, or, you know, the, the typical strength that can carve through a marine. Mm -mm. Pistols that can pierce tanks. Yep, it's over. Yeah. It's done. That's it. And and some of the most convincing Keller Morphs will actually get whole hive populaces to work with them to obtain depleted radioactive materials to forge into more powerful weapons. These people will die, expose themselves to radiation because, oh my God, Superman has arrived. Superman has arrived and he needs more depleted uranium bullets for his 50 mil, 50 mil uh, six shooter. And that's not questionable at all when you consider I've been stuck under the thumb of that governor this whole time. This guy could fix it. It's over. Yeah. It's so Jover. Yeah. Gen, Gen 4 is, the roots are in and they're strangling every tree nearby now. It's, it's, it's so extremely Jover. It's done. So Gen 5, it, it, it's a wrap. It, it, this, it, this is the best of the best There's they have. a Gen 5? Yeah. There's is, room for that. Yes. There's a Gen 5. This is the best of the best they have. This is when the full horror of the cult is brought to bear as they bring out countless unknown numbers of guys suffering from male pattern baldness. Awesome. Is this where we hit blue man group again? Yeah, no, it's just normal looking people. Oh, cool. cool. Nope. And, and I don't I mean blue man group, just like slightly. Oh, bigger. just bald? Just some are bald. Just some, bald. some are a little too blue, but like, eh, you know, poor ventilation. <laughs> yeah. Like Gen 5, the horrors of Gen 5, tax paying citizens. The worst thing, the worst thing that could be brought upon a person, baldness, alopecia. No, no, not all of them are bald. Just some of them are bald. Just some of them? Yeah, just some of them are bald. Oh. The art really overemphasizes it. Like, they can be hot. But they're not full Lex Luthers? No. They're just normal. I mean, you. the only way you would tell that they're gene stealers is if you blood tested them. That's pretty much it. And then you'd just discover what is... Mm -hmm. What are all these spikes doing on your blood cells? They, they, these guys hold jobs, walk around in broad daylight, join clubs. Exist, be normal. No more cloak and dagger. Oh, they just own the place now. They're 
yeah, that's it's there's no longer oh there's that shady guy at the bar or oh this guy only shows up at night or oh the Keller Morph only shows up when we need him the most. No, they can run for office now. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Which means that if your world has democracy, it's gonna die in broad daylight. Yeah. Yeah, as they take up any and every position that will give them influence. They will run for office. They will tweak and put out Keller Morphs that are the most charismatic things you've ever seen. Just to whip people up into a frenzy. They will they will create ke- they, uh, not Keller Morphs, but just Regular gene stealers who can do that. They will create, like, let's say a world is super into athletics. They'll just put out Michael Jordan. Because they can do that. They'll just say, oh, okay, so you know, that's really, a, I figure you really that's like a... sports. What's the maximum logically that a human could grow? Okay, cool. What's the strongest reasonably that a human could be? Okay, cool. And congratulations. Well, because at this point, they've mastered genetic tampering so mm-hmm. much. It's just... and, and it's not, you think it's just the heights that they're doing it, but no. They will bother to put out a guy who's slightly overweight, hairline's kind of thinning, does not know how to put on a fitting shirt, and they'll have him run for city council. Like, can't make eye contact with the camera to save his life, and they'll have him just, eh. That's a perfect city council member. Yeah. The, it, it, if they've gotten to this point, it is horrifying it's a much simpler question to ask what aren't they involved in (laughs) it it is they're anywhere and everywhere and it doesn't matter what kind of world it is if you have like uh, if you're on a super duper royalist world where you worship the night houses they will put out a complete bombshell just to go and seduce one of the royals and then get into the family that way. This is the point that your crazy conspiracy theorist uncle, like this, this is their actual reality. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you, you seem insane if you try and call it out at this point. No, you don't understand. They're all part of a scheme together, guys. Yeah. Y- you look crazy. The birds aren't real. They're cameras for... <laughs> the birds aren't real. They are cameras for the CIA. This... Uh, the, oh, God. <laughs> The world is lost at this point, and they don't even know it. At this point, it's not just producing the height of just this generation, uh, like the height of the previous one was a Keller Morphs. And at the very peak of this, they can start putting out proper psychers. They <laughs> yeah. can what? Mm-hmm. These guys, if you look closely, you can tell that they're gene stealers. They have really heavy set bones and kind of big heads, but all psychers look pretty weird, so. I, it is I mean, come on, the navigator's got a third eye. We don't really question them. <laughs> so, yeah, they can start putting out psychers now, as well as generals who are so competent, it borders on precognition. That's frightening. Yeah. And now that we're at the height of the cult, it's time to bring that patriarch back into the conversation. Because this whole time, they have been the mind behind it all. And the way it works is it's a gestalt consciousness, and each member adds to it. So, yeah, we've, we've done gestalt consciousness before. It, it, it's the flood. It's the... Well... Uh, something. Uh, you know, come to mind, there's a lot that... Uh, are notable in my it's head not just moment. extra brain power it gets that's really helpful. Um, it gets quite a bit of psychic might from having a bunch of minds connected to it. Um, enough psychic might that it goes from being like, you know, though you can see most psychers in the warp kind of if you squint hard enough. Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes a beacon like Big E is, which is where the tyranids come in. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of cool because this is just like, this is the point where we're hitting evolutionary science here. Yeah. Like these things are just bred to infiltrate a populace and make it look as bright as possible and ready for the Tyranids. And the Tyranids are and just like, And they use oh, it hi. to navigate the way everyone else uses Big E to navigate. This is why they're so close to my heart. They fit in with the Tyranids so well. So, and even, the best thing is, like, you, you beat me to my point. It totally works from an evolutionary perspective because, you I mean, look at that. It, it, it just functions. It just functions so well. It just but functions. also, it works with the retcons included. Because think about it. The first ever gene stealer cult being seen from the Imperium's eyes, yeah, a bunch of weird bald guys. Weird, bald blue people. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a weirdo. Of course, they would totally, if you assume we're looking at 40K through the Imperium's eyes, which we do tend to for a lot of the time, uh, they would totally just chalk it up. 
to just a bunch of weirdos on a moon cult that is completely unrelated to the bugs coming in from stage left. Those are two different problems. We'll deal with them later. Let's deal with the bugs now. And then the bald freaks will come in later. Well, I mean, you look at that. It's just like, that guy over there is just bald. That thing has bones so sharp it can slice space marines in half. Mm Mm-hmm. Just round them up in a corner, and then we will deal with the thing descending from the heavens. Why do I hear cheering behind me? Why are they celebrating? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. (laughs) It's my favorite Samonella bit. Their job is to pave the way, and they do it fantastically. The Tyranids are always balancing a budget. I don't care what faction you think in 40k has the most hard math to do. It's the Tyranids every day of the week. War costs money, just ask the Pentagon. <laughs> it, and, and it's a zero-sum budget, too. Yeah, yeah they, they can never overspend. They, it, it hurts them to do. And so to keep it balanced, they have to be really clever. That means, hey, let's not hit Terra first, per se. Let's go around it and hit something else. Or, wow. That world is horrifying. Throw whatever we need to to deal with that because it'll cripple everything else in the sector. Do you think the Tyranids are depositing into high-yield stocks and a Roth IRA? Oh, I promise you they are. Oh, they have to be, but each dollar is about 10 human lives. (laughs) It's just in. Average human life. 10 cents. Um, according it, it, that, according to the Tyranids, because they don't, Tencents. they have zero, they have zero concept of money. They are all. It's this big cosmic game of thousands of ants counting beans, just a whole nest of them counting beans. And the gene stealers represent their soft power, which is something you don't see very often in forty k. Forty k is very might makes right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's. I mean, the closest you get to soft power is. Honestly, the assassin or um, and even they are pretty. They have a man. Less, I would call them less soft power and more very um, pinpoint power. They have a guy on ice with every drug imaginable coursing through his veins. Aside, aside. Did from we forget them. about that? I think we forgot about that. Aside from them, you did forget about that. Cool. Um, <laughs> aside from the, the gene stealers are very refreshing. But, I mean, you still have the venom and the um. No, yeah. we never see them. They don't count. We never see them. They don't count. I'll count them when they get a book. Uh, <laughs> a I whole was also book. going to see. I was also going to say not the Calexus, the um, Calidus, Calidus snipers. Yeah, yeah they, they have a book. So no, not count. the snipers. The um, the shapeshifters with the long red ponytails. Oh no, the Vindicare are the snipers. I'm sorry, Vindicare. Vindicare, the snipers. Yeah, the Vindicare I knew it was snipers. a V. That they mm-hmm. There's their names are so so much fun. They're so much fun. I'll, I'll, I will give you the Calexus is that I'll give I'll give you that. Those soft. are soft power. Pretty soft. Um, the Vindicare is also pretty soft in the way like. No, I would call the Vindicare like I said. The Vindicare hey, are very pinpoint power. They're not going to like punch you. They're just gonna like. I mean, your skull is gonna be soft after they're done. So soft power. <laughs> no, it's not gonna be soft. It's just gonna be chunky marinara. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> but the gene stealers are a very refreshing, uh, they're, they're, they're very nice, cool drink when you look at 40K because they rarely come into outright combat. At, we'll, we'll get to that, don't worry. Um, they, they rarely, before Gen 5, let me add a quick note, rarely before Gen 5 get into outright combat because I'll be honest, if they're caught, even, even after they have Keller Morphs, if they're caught by Marines or Inquisitors... <laughs> It's kind of over, dude. It's 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 such a wash. It's such a wash. For for them to win, they have to have already won. If that makes sense. Yeah, they're very uh, it, very very slow. Yes, the goal is it never comes to outright combat until they're fully ready. They shoot to sell such a compelling product that the most successful cults have people in it working for it that are not actively spliced into it. Like, the, the most successful gene stealer cults have normal people who just think, yeah, the Emperor should have four arms. That's fine. Normal. The gene stealers are like the businessmen in the in the 20s and 30s who are selling you asbestos and, you know, not being around to see the... Well, they didn't know The mesothelioma <laughs> advertisements all, in the early 2000s. They didn't know back then. Plus, that just was, like, super inflammable. So, like, think about it. If it, wasn't there a king who if had a whole... If asbestos didn't k- 
kill us, it would be, be a the, wonder material. It'd be used in so many more things if it wasn't the, like the most lethal thing. Well, it's not the most lethal thing ever, but it's up there. If it did not kill us, mm -hmm. so good. My favorite is that king who had a whole tablecloth made of the stuff, and he'd just be like, see? Doesn't catch fire! <laughs> he died of a weird lung disease that we've only just recently identified. Well, if I remember correctly... No, he had a cape of asbestos! Yeah, it was a cape. That he would throw into the fireplace for, like, a show. <laughs> If I remember to me, correctly, it was kind of like a magic material back, back then. Back in back in Victorian era uh, England, there was uh, no, not Victorian, er, earlier than Victorian, like seventeenth to eighteenth century England. There was a trend among the aristocracy uh, that you would put your wine, your red red wine specifically, in uh, lead cups because it gave it a very uh, sparkly. And I've heard tingly lead. Okay, flavor. Do not try this at home. I've heard lead tastes good. <laughs> don't, don't verify this for me. Please do not verify this for me. I'm begging you. Colonial but era Brits I, were drinking out of drinking wine out of lead cups. I have heard from one of the less bright individuals I know in my life that lead does in fact taste good. Who? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say their name now. <laughs> they want this. They know who they are. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> no, there's no way you do. Oh. Um, I think. Jesus. Anyway, it's it's either lead. It's it's something you really shouldn't be drinking. I'll have to verify. It's probably I'll text lead. It's I'll probably we'll text lead. them after this. Uh, in the most convoluted of of gene stealer cults, um, eh, like that segue. <laughs> Jeez. No, no, I'm still shell shocked over. Eating lead. I didn't say eating. I just said he knows it tastes good. Don't blame me. He's Licking. Only... I don't know. Yeah. Um, in the most convoluted of gene stealer cults, you're not just helping them unwittingly. You're not just putting up posters and recruiting. Uh, you can be part of a complicated chain. Okay. There is a Gen 6. What? But, uh, We'll get to that. Don't worry. Gen six what? is. Don't worry. We'll get to that. Gen six is the River what's, Rubicon. What's, what's the? What's don't the, worry. Don't what's worry. The, what's the point? At this point, we won. You'll you'll see. You'll see. We'll get to that. We won. Later. We'll, we won. We'll get to that later. Um, that, that's why I said they don't like to get into open combat before Gen five. Gen six is coming. Gene, there, there's combat art of gene stealers. Where do you think that comes in? Okay. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> but the way the way it works is it's very odd because uh, once you cross over to Gene Six, there's kind of no. I mean, uh, Gen Six, there's no coming back. It's River Rubicon. So if if a gene stealer world, for example, is just putting out the signal and Tyranids aren't showing up, well, we can't really do our whole routine yet. We gotta get this job done ourselves. Yeah, and, somehow. And so sometimes they will actively use people in this convoluted scheme to stay intentionally at Gene Five, at Gen Five, where it's like you you don't even know what's going. You don't know that you are a cog in a machine. You just keep getting approached by really hot people to have kids. You just keep doing it, and you have no idea that you're just kind of being used to water down, <laughs> to, to 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 effectively just water things down for a little bit. Until we're ready. Yeah. They play with Punnett squares. They know. <laughs> this is actually like it's full on. This is this is what your crazy conspiracy theorist uncle mm -hmm. thinks society yeah, you, is like. You can be actively used for selective breeding and you don't know you don't a know. thing. That's how good they are at their jobs. Uh, in a universe where might makes right, they are so nice. Because they just speak softly and carry a big tongue. Ew. Uh. <laughs> I love butchering historical Ew. quotes. Uh, <laughs> Gross. It's actually why it's it's actually part of why I like the Tao too. I find them or yeah, quite quite I, I quite like the Tao. I find them refreshing. Relative it, it's it's nice to see them try. I'll be honest, it's kind of nice to watch them fail too. Because they will always approach with a smile and an open hand, and so often do they just catch a fat fist for it. And sometimes it's kind of nice. I won't lie. I'm here for it. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice when not everyone is immediately, I will kill you, mm -hmm. you know? Or there are different brands of I will kill you, you know? Where like, the, elder, the elder didn't really kill you out of spite. It's more like, eh, you're in the way. Like I wish it, you wouldn't. No, it's, it's nice to know that if I were to, like, fall asleep and wake up in the middle of a field uh, in Warhammer 40K, there'd be somebody who, instead of, like, 
impaling me on the ground with a chainsword would hold out a hand and help me up. Yeah, yeah. Well, depending on where you land, somebody will, you may get a commissar to help you up. Join, join the army. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes a helping hand sucks. Why are you laying down, recruit? Yeah. Up! Where <laughs> is your armor? The Gene Stealers have something that not not any of the other more soft-spoken factions have too, which is they can get into some weird high-level asymmetrical warfare. Because look, ro rogue traders, they can get into some convoluted trade wars and stuff. That's cool. The Tau can get into weird diplomatic spats and stuff. The Eldar can do the same between craft world and craft world and craft world. That all happens. It doesn't matter. Um, but the Gene Stealers are the only faction, to my knowledge, who can actively be working against something and fight tooth and claw for it because they're at gen 5 it's taken them so long to build up this level of clout they're the pope now and there are orcs arriving <laughs> i took so long <laughs> dealing with this getting to this point you are not going to screw this up for me and <laughs> so you will get this weird and fun situation that i need more books written about where it's orcs necrons chaos doesn't matter whatever it is it's, it's not the tyranids that have now arrived and will destroy the planet and so you have <laughs> the patriarch in the sewers playing this weird game of war with the general it's created and the psychers it's created where it's leading an amazing defense of this world but not too amazing of a defense so that nobody catches on that everyone's in because think about it if you're in an army and everyone is lockstep turn lockstep turn lockstep turn and you're not that in sync the inquisitor off. from off world is going to look at you like and so i i love mm -hmm. i love the concept of the the patriarch in the sub basement just all right everyone snap to the left shoot that down and three of you need to die now <laughs> oh, oh, or the the actual human leadership scattered in with the gene stealer leadership is giving commands that the patriarch knows are stupid and its generals know are stupid it's like follow them follow them follow them just just, just follow no here's no no here's the thing. just make it look natural no no, no. Fo follow them and when this person loses it, I'll make sure his boss fires the hell out of him and then we'll have somebody else in charge. It's good. It's good. Fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. We can make more kids, guys. This is within acceptable parameters. <laughs> and it's... So, I can only imagine a gene stealer commissar just, I need with, to shoot some of you to blend in. With it, You three. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I can just again. I can just imagine the patriarch in the basement with a headache, trying to sort all of that. But this, out. Also, this also goes to show how intelligent a patriarch can get at its height, because it can do it. And oh, it has. It, 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 listen, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. It's an actual like acting task to. It is acting. Be bad it is at strategizing. It, you, no, no, no. I mean, like, it mm. is hard for actors who are trained actors mm -hmm. to act badly on purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is now, you're asking the patriarchs to do that. To do that on 10 different stages at once. Yeah. While maybe an inquisitor's watching if it's bad enough. <laughs> and if it doesn't do its job right, well, when the Tyranids arrive, there'll be nothing here. And I will be responsible for starving off a hive fleet. <laughs> so they do it. Because if they don't, there'll be nothing left for the hive when they arrive. Oh, some alliteration there. Uh, sometimes it's the other way around where there's plenty left. They don't get into this weird situation where they have to defend their food. Um, but there's no hive to co come and collect. So they just kind of chill? Uh, I mean, it happens. Sometimes hive fleets bump into space marines, dude. and Or they bump into the wrong eld. Or, or they inadvertently will endanger an Eldar craft world 10 years from now, so they must die for it. And so they go. I mean, or they get in the middle of an orc Y, and so they must go. Like Things do kill them. There's a whole line in the middle of the galaxy. There were high fleets moving through there. They are now gone. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and so... Which uh, drives me to a point of just like, this. could that be... The Imperium is not against exterminating worlds just to make a firewall for Tyranids to not come in. Mm -hmm. What... Okay, one person in the Imperium is not okay with that. Let's be fair. <laughs> what is what Let's is, be fair to the most brutal regime imaginable. What is the harm 
in letting a world fall to gene stealers if you know about it just to use as bait for a tyranid hive fleet to use all of its resources to fly in and then exterminate it at the last minute the tyranids are now starving fall in that requires the imperium to a share all the information they have on every source like on every front which does not happen they never one of the most infuriating things about the imperium is one guy will make a discovery and keep it to himself so the guy who realized, hey, we can create dead zones for the Tyranids by blowing them up, is not telling the guy who realized the Gene Stealers are an advanced fleet for the Tyranids, who's not telling the guy that the Tyranids use the Gene Stealers to navigate. It, hor it's a horrific organization. I see. Horrific miscommunication. And then B, let's say you can do all of that because there's a competent head at the helm now. It's not easy to kill a Hive fleet. I, I really undersold it when I said, oh, they'll bump into Marines, or oh, they'll bump into... No. I mean, I mean that's why I say, like, starve them out, getting them to a place, mm -hmm. and then exterminate us that place so they have no food, and mm -hmm. now they're starving. And then and the big problem number C, that happens about four times the Tyranids have changed tactics now. I see. This I was is like, okay, you, fi you figure this out. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a real, it's a... So maybe this strategy would be a great single novel and then uh, this, it, that's no, it. It's a solid strategy that could really work if anyone ever shared in 40K. <laughs> God, it's the most infuriating thing Did sometimes. Did nobody teach the commissars sharing is caring? God, well, some commissars. The Inquisitors definitely didn't get that info. They did not get that sticky note. In fact, I would say if you share, you will never be an Inquisitor. Ever. It's almost impossible to. You have to be kind of... You have to hold some secrets for yourself. Kind of a psychopath. Kind of. You you can't really play well with society on a wider scale. Some do, but not many. Um, but yeah, there, there, there are situations where hives just don't arrive for dinner. Dad goes out for milk and never comes back. Um, and in that case, the gene stealers will kind of stay in Gen 5, bouncing around, trying to desperately manage there. that as they continue to expand, basically, just taking more and more positions of power. This can get to the point where an entire world is effectively controlled by them. They have the planetary government and, and, and everyone who really matters. They have their own elections that they'll win and lose, but, like, they didn't really win or did, lose. Did, did they? It's, it's a hidden uniparty kind of a thing where it's like, yeah, candidate B lost, but candidate A is voting for the same things. So. Did everybody really lose? Yeah, did candidate B really lose? Or like, it, it, they, they can get into some sketchy business. Um, and so what they will do from there is they'll start going from world to world in local areas. And they can take over entire sectors. Creating this hidden tyrannid empire within an empire. Hmm. And the nicest thing about it is they are so efficient... No imperial bureaucrat will ever question it. Hmm. Because the Imperium is so used to looking at a planet when it doesn't pay its taxes or it's moving at half speed. That planet is now doing double what it used to. It's doing great. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it alone now. And, and honestly, it, if the high fleet never shows up, that's the worst case scenario. Because we'll, 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 we'll get to Gen 6 later. That's pretty bad. It's pretty apocalyptic. But if they just stay here, continuing to build this empire within an empire... It is why I have the subtle tinfoil hat conspiracy theory that the Imperium's already lost. Because they could just be so deeply infiltrated with gene stealers, just... Okay. Every world has to pay a tithe, either in money, resources, or bodies, right? They are paying in bodies, and those bodies are intermixing with everybody else, and now... They will oh. always pay the Imperial tithe, and they shag at such a rate that they can pay it in spades with interest. Oh, no. And so, God knows how many guards' regiments are filled with them. Oh, no. And that's before we get to the fact that some worlds have been improved under their leadership and now produce medicine that goes to the wider Imperium. Food that goes to the wider Imperium. <laughs> so, <laughs> the credence to that conspiracy theory, that the, 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 you, yeah. And the icing on the cake? <laughs> yeah. The Imperium eats corpse starch. It's a safe bet that there's at least one factory run by the gene stealers that's churning that stuff out. How many bugs do you eat in a year again? 
<laughs> Spiders gray. <laughs> And that's why I, I, and that's something I would really like the Imperium to deal with at some point. Just the shocking realization that, oh God. Uh, like half of our leadership is gene stealers. Because mm -hmm. it's not impossible that someone on the High Lords is a gene stealer. That would be an awesome, like, murder mystery novel. I hope so. Like a... I hope so. I know GW uh, watches these somehow. So. I, wa I want to see Knives Out, but with the High Lords. It would be, oh, they're all geezers. So it'd be like Knives Out, but nine hours long with prune juice. <laughs> 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 like they're all geezers, man. It's to be rough. fair, have you seen Knives Out? No, I haven't. I Most of it. the cast is geezers. Okay, Batista's not a geezer. Come on. The first one. Not he's a, just... No, no, the first oh, one, okay, not okay. Glass Onion. Glass Daniel Onion. Craig's not a geezer either. He's just b retired off of being Bond. I, I wish I could retire off of being Bond. At least 50% of the cast is geezers. Okay, fair enough. I need to watch it. I probably should watch it. Yet another one on the list of movies I should it's, watch. It's very good. I love uh, Knives Out. And, and you may think that that's kind of conspiratorial or insane, but Gene Steeler cults have popped up on Earth. How'd they get there? I mean, they, they, they were there on the Golden Throne tour. <laughs> they have a selfie with that one tall chair. <laughs> yep. There's art of custodies fighting them off. Which means they've interacted with custodies. Uh, the group that steals genetic matter. Uh, I, do you see what I mean about how... It may these, just already be Jover. These guys, like, everyone thinks the Tyranids are the problem. Yeah, sure, whatever. I think that's worse. See, this is the thing about 40K that's just like so weird to me is uh, everybody dreads the end times, but I'm just like... It's already begun. It's one, the end times have already become. It just... Yeah. It, it, there are so many checks that are happening. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is multi-dimensional chess with time travel. There are so many kings in check here. Mm -hmm. We don't know which one's going to checkmate. Mm -hmm. It's just like, which storyline could this go down? How how many people are going to just uh, up and... Ugh, how many... What, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> James, your workshop. What are you going to do? I, I, I find it compelling. I really do. But it's, that that is kind of the, the, the threat. I think it, it really feeds into the grim dark of oh, it. Because it's yeah. just like, oh yeah, the end is inevitable. But just ha which how? Way? What which variant? Way? This is without me <laughs> mentioning the fact that there are chaos gods. They are probably vaguely aware of this. One of them commands pestilence. One of them can see the past and the future. Both those guys probably know this is happening. Who's to say they've let it slide? Who's to say they haven't made it worse? <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, the just... potential for problems they represent listen, listen, is something listen. that cannot be understated. I, I, it, 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 doomering is not valid unless you live in 40K. This is why I love that one image of Gilman smoking. <laughs> because I don't know how you... Because he's probably thought about this too. Yeah. How, how do I even... I can't. I won't. I, problem for later. Problem <laughs> for later. Uh, <laughs> that's an unknown. What we do know is there is Gen 6 if... And when the hive does come to collect, because I, they do like to come and collect. At what point is it too much? Gen five, you already won. You already won. Mm, no, is this a victory lap? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, all the gene stealer genes that were recessive up at this point come in full bore. So the next generation after five, like regular people, will give birth to hard tyranids. So this is regular looking people regular looking people they're this still gene stealers literally just is the chest yes. we're saying and at this point they're coming out of every wall out of every surface they are everywhere the, the best way to describe it is they are a plan generations in the making they're in your walls they're in your walls they're that, in your walls that's another quote by them by the way we are the plan generations in the making that is frighteningly hard <laughs> right everywhere nothing is working properly every cell phone tower is shut down every this is the part of this part right here this is the part we mentioned in the tyranid episode everything else hadn't been mentioned do you see what i mean y yeah yeah <laughs> this this is the one thing we went over in the tyranid episode <laughs> do you see why a i feel like such a conspiracy theory sometimes with the red strings everywhere tying all this together and b why i also love it because zoom in and 
you missed all of that before. None of that was mentioned. Yeah, yeah. This is the part you know. Yeah. Where they're coming out of every single orifice, every single place. They've shut down everything. You realize everyone in charge was a tyrannid. Oh, God, I was recruiting for them. And as this is happening, you look to the skies, and the four-armed emperor has arrived. Four-armed emperor. <laughs> in all his glory. And oh. it's... At this point, there's a couple ways this could shake down. Uh, it could be the full bore, just surface war that breaks out and you lose immediately. Um, some cults break into this religious frenzy because they, they do take different forms depending on where they are. Religion is real convenient, so they will often be religious and they'll see them as the four-armed emperor, the star children, those from beyond it that gazes. It that gazes. They have so many fun names for the Tyranids. My God. I'm telling you, these guys could write Macbeth. They're very good at this. <laughs> and so it, they, they have different ways they react the more zealous ones will it's a frenzy it's, it's like sharks freaking out effectively oh my god m m my lord is here i must put on my best show well i imagine uh, they start feeling the 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 shadow and the warp and they start freaking out yeah that's that's exactly right yeah. and the nice thing about them is they don't need the bodies intact because it'll all be melted anyway so they'll just start ripping through everything he, there is no discretion nothing Nothing. They 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 will. Uh, it, it, I mean, it makes sense logistically. It but, gets uh, messy. Pressure washer messy. Pressure washer. Pressure washer messy. It's. Y y I wouldn't be surprised if they aren't bioforms just <laughs> directed back into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Terrans had to develop something like that because you look at some of the art of the Gene Stealers rising up. Oh, oh. It, it bad. It, at least it would be quick. At least it would be. Oh my God! They're in my window. <laughs> And then you're you're gone, and you're no. already. They're in so a... freakishly strong. They're so freakishly fast. A bunch of Gen Ones are running around slobbering like, <laughs> like you you just die so fast. You don't stand a chance. Your phone doesn't work. You don't know where your wife is. Like, it's and then, 10, it's ten a.m. Do you know where your kids are? Like, it's over. You lost. And then suddenly you're already dead and in a nutrient pool, and that's it. Yeah, and that's the most spectacular way it can go. That's the way it often goes. My favorite is uh, there there are some cults that are a little bit calmer. They they've. I, I couldn't verify if this is true. I couldn't find the book source. So take this with a grain of salt. But I did read about uh, the, this cult that had uh, styled itself as, I believe they called themselves the Observers of Nihilism or something like that. Um, it's, very, it's, very, it's very hard Nietzsche. And when, when the Tyranids arrived, there was no adulation. There was no screaming. There was no great slaughter. They just calmly all stood up and walked into acid pits. Oh, Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. They're not accepted. They're not full, uh, I wouldn't even call that full Nietzsche. That's like full cosmic horror. <laughs> like imagine you're going about your Sunday, and suddenly the t the sky turns black, and a pit of acid opens up in town center, and you, have and you just watch a bunch of like hooded robed people just walking in. Okay, you think you're watching them? These are the most charismatic people you've ever met. They have convinced you, and they've spent generations convincing you, and they've written texts convincing you that this is how it's supposed to go. The emperor is finally here, and we must go rejoin him. Oh. You're not watching from your window. You're not watching from your window. You're you're celebrating. You're in the this line. This is your rapture. You're in the line. And and that's the most jacked up thing too. I hadn't even considered that. They could style they could style the Tyranids coming as the rapture. Oh. They, they, like if, if Tyranids were on our world right now, they could totally rewrite it. So instead of, I believe it's trumpet sounding, some seals breaking, something with multiple heads. Like there's a lot to the rapture. You can't miss it when it starts. If the if the gene stealers are here, they would totally rewrite They'd it. They totally and, rewrite that, and it would involve acid pits and no beams of light, and people would do it. That's the sketchiest thing. <laughs> like we we always see the gene stealer art of them sprouting out everywhere and ripping through everything. We don't get to see enough of their just cold calculation, where it's like we've done our jobs. It's it. It's time. Mm -hmm. Oh, frightening. That's so. It's even, it gets even more frightening when you consider that um, the Tyranids will... I don't know how I feel about this, but it's canon, so I will mention it. Uh, the Tyranids will, as you are descending into the acid pits, which, judging by this description, I'm assuming it's quite the fall. Like, it's not just... Because I always thought it's kind of like you walk in and you, it's like a... The, the, the liquid's right there. The liquid's right there. You walk in, you're dissolving as you go. And by the time you're like a midway through the kiddie pool, you're gone, right? That's how I always pictured it. But um, the way... The painting, this picture... The, 
the, the picture that this is painting. Th- thank you. <laughs> the picture that this is painting is it's more like a leap into like a crater almost. Or you have like a good minute before you impact. Mm-hmm. And then I have to wonder, is it really the acid killing you or the fact that when you fall past a certain amount, it's like you hit concrete. You hit concrete, you know? yeah. Regardless, uh, there, there are some instances where as you're falling, they'll flip a switch and you'll be aware of everything you've done. Oh. Like all the brainwashing will just wear off. Oh, that's insidious. Yep. Oh, no. I will be honest. I'm kind of not a fan of that. No. That's and, like that's like too grim. That's like giving BoJack Horseman the view from halfway down. No, because, okay, here's my thing. Here's, here's a couple of problems it has. Number one, plan generations in the making. You snap. Okay, cool. I've known this since birth. I was born into this religion. This is my end times. Unless they suddenly t- take the 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 um, unless they, like, psychic effort to snap and show you everything, show yeah. you this plan fully from and then before. You go, oh, oh God, I've been played. Yeah, right? and then B, if no, it's are- not. I've been played. My dad's been played. My dad's dad's been played. My dad's 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 been played. My dad's 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 been played. My dad's 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 and then you have this image of your mom getting like just Gen One tongue thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's overly cruel. But and number two, the Tyranids are always billed as the horror of nature it's there, don't get me wrong something real scary about something meticulously planning to kill you that's always horrifying however there is also some true horror to the bear that eats you alive and just does not care and it's there's no malice in that bear's heart it does not care it is you came here right before i had to hibernate and there were no fish buddy there is nutrients in you there should be and nutrients there's in some me. Re- there's some real, genuine horror there mm-hmm. to be had where it's just, you're still on the food chain. You know, it's the same way. Do you spite every chicken you grab from Costco? Really? Do you bother to show footage of the ducks getting saved from the oil spills? Yeah, or do you just too, eat it thoughtlessly? That's too much effort. It's too much effort. If I sat there and coached my whole burger through what it could have been, the, like this... The, 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 the Tyranids are very animal logic. Like, I eat nutrients, I get nutrients. Yeah. You would have to be an actual sociopath it's to t- to walk into, like, a chicken... It, like, like factory farming is awful. We know that the chickens are probably in one by one containers, right? It'd be you'd have to be an actual just like sociopath to walk into all of these chickens and show them a screen of you going generation by generation <laughs> enslaving. But that's chickens. basically what the, that's basically what that source but purports that's, they that's, do. That's what I, that's like, what I mean. It, it, me. it, it, it kind of breaks the character of the right? Tyranids because the Tyranids are just uh, they're the bear can, that eats can, you and doesn't w- care. Would you personally go to? Would you? personally build a factory farm for cows and ensure all day every day they watch footage of like you know the brahmin that are worshipped in other parts of the country yeah where it's 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 this animal that gets revered and it gets to roam around and it's great and it's fantastic would you bother to show that to why them? what's the point what's the point what's the point it's so malicious mm-hmm. it's like it's like oh my god go burn down an orphanage of that right you, you, like it's, you, you probably it's get so more... mustache twirling it's like go tie someone to train tracks you can get more joy out of that honestly <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe this is one of those they've uh, ascribed to the Gen X millennial art of acquiring suffering. They get the passive income suffering. Maybe it adds <laughs> flavor. I don't know. The nice thing about 40K is you can ascribe to whatever you want. If you prefer the petty tyranids, or, that's not fair. The more malicious tyranids who, who show you everything that they have done before they eat you, go for it. Go for it. I don't if you prefer the more unfeeling, just eh, jump into the pit. It could, cosmic horror. You don't know why they're doing this. Mm-hmm. It could just be as simple as uh, you have nutrients. I need nutrients. Give me nutrients. Yeah. And, and so, and this also ties into the biggest problem I have with the gene stealers because after all their, all the losers in the cult get jumped in, they jump into the acid pits too. That's it. It's a wrap. They it's die. Over. Goo. It's done. Goo. Yep. Ashes to ash. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. And then a uh, uh, Tyranid hive ship in orbit just goes... Sucks it right up. Through and a straw and it's over. It's yeah. And, and that kind of sucks because the Gene Stealers cannot win. Cannon. They're... Because if the Tyranids never come, they technically lost. And if the Tyranids do come, they still lose. And if they get spotted by the Imperium, they still lose. 
And if you write about them and have them do uprisings everywhere, then that means the Tyranids are going to be everywhere. And they still loot. There's no... The, like, it's hard to love a faction when there's no win condition. The Gene Stealers are a tool rather than a faction. They, yeah. are, they are the spider's venom liquefying the inside of its prey rather than the spider itself. And, and this is the part, because in every episode I do like to mention the downsides of the faction. That, that's a huge downside for them. They will never catch a win. And honestly, there are some people who do prefer the version of them where it wasn't a hard tyrannid thing per se but more like um this creature that's in a symbiotic relationship with the tyrannids where like you know those fish that stick on to predators and they will clean their teeth in exchange well the predator gets clean teeth and no infections the mm-hmm. fish get free food yeah and they both tolerate each other y- yeah i i'm I kind of prefer that variant of them where they're just this thing that... Because some, some hive fleets will, like, not melt them and instead just kind of let them attach to the ships like the way those those parasites do and just kind of float around with them. Just, like, come aboard. We'll drop you off at the next planet and you can restart. And I love the concept of the hive fleet with tiny little leeches effectively stuck to it. Just like, these, look at those little guys. Look at those little goons. They, they did their thing. And that gives them a hard win condition now because it's like... The parasite got to eat clean the predator's teeth. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Uh, And so some people do like that. I can see why they do. I kind of like that too. I kind of like that. But I also do really like this perfect cog evolved over time that fixes every problem. Them being a tool rather than becoming a... Because if you think about it, they they also... It's not just that they soften up the meal before the... It's not just the venom, but they are the web too. Because the Tyranids suck at traveling. It's... They have th- possibly the worst form of travel, period. Its speed changes depending on the rider. Its effects changes depending on the rider. What we do know is it's definitely slower than the Imperium and the Eldar and maybe even the Tau too. They are awful at getting places, not to mention they also suck at navigation. Yeah, they need the bright light of, this hey, the- here I am, a bunch of gene stealers like, ready to get eaten. A, a high fleet can genuinely expend the massive resources it takes to get somewhere. Dead world. And now what? What, what? what do we do now? Next world over, Ultramar. Hmm. Mm, well, we can't take great. that on. A, I can't take that on an empty stomach. Like, well, at that point, don't they? Wouldn't they just get desperate and go? F- I mean, they try, but McCrag is some crack, dude. <laughs> this is just not. I don't know. If I'm a starving Tyranid and the only planet nearby with sustenance on it is McCrag, fuck it, we ball. That is like, I am a starving artist. I shall rip the food out of the rock's mouth to survive. And I'm like, it's, it's not going to end well for you. Like, you're malnourished, honey. Go find someone else. <laughs> If the rock is the only person around. <laughs> I mean, I suppose if you have five feet worth of movement left in you, D&D style rules, <laughs> where after if that sixth foot will kill me, then yeah, I suppose if the rock is the only one there, you I go mean, for that, it. That's what I mean. It's just like, mm, there's nothing else. <laughs> Might as well. So Might as well try. Oh, uh, so they fix so many problems for the Tyranids that I can, I can, I can really see both sides of the... The argument. Uh, the other problem I really have with them is it's very tell, don't show. We know that they've been infecting the Imperium's medicine. Haven't seen that, Pano. We know they've been contributing guardsmen at an alarming rate. Haven't seen that really, Pano. We know that they found a way to put their genes in seeds. Haven't really seen that, Pano. I don't know. Maybe James in his workshop are just stacking dominoes to like pile onto the Imperium at some point. Maybe I don't know because um, there are so many other things that we've talked about too that just could be the end of the Imperium immediately. It's just another one, yeah. And the nice thing about the Gene Stealers is they the the Imperium works best when they have another problem to solve because it kind of falls apart if they don't have an external problem. Um, the most brutal regime imaginable will kind of collapse in on itself if it's not fighting everything everywhere all at once. It, yeah. And so some, and also some of the Imperium's best moments are when their back is against the wall. So the Gene Stealers do a very good job of that, and I really hope they get more of that as well. Regardless, though, at the end of the day, they're in this. The Gene Stealers occupy a very odd place, as written right now, where they're fantastic. They fix a lot of the problems for the Tyranids, and they kind of mesh so well together that it, it 
they're basically the same. They're so symbiotic that they're basically the same organism. Yeah, it's a match made in heaven. Uh, but they also have a, or not in heaven, it's, it's a, a match, match made, made somewhere. In, uh, uh, yeah, but they also have a bunch of glaring problems that cheapen them at times. And that's before me even getting into the fact that on the tabletop, it gets worse. It gets worse on the tabletop? Okay, because it's one of those things where if you have a bad gene stealer player, they suck. It's awful, and it's not worth even trying. Oh, it's a very high skill ceiling. But if you have a good gene stealer player, it doesn't or, feel me. fair. High skill floor. It, it, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel fair at all. Eh, high skill ceiling is what it would... High skill, high skill ceiling. ceiling is when you can... It's Both like, the ceiling and the floor are very high. Y- yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the room is above you. Yes. You have to jump up to and it. And so the best of the best to make them feel just unfair. And then the worst is... You don't really get to play them very much. And then on top of all of that, they're a horde army too. Oh, so you so, have to buy a bunch of models. Just ladies like and gentlemen, would. open up that wallet. It gets yep. expensive quick. It's the guardsmen, but with more challenge. Which, I mean, if you like the guardsmen. Oh, the, the guardsmen are challenging. Are they? Kind. You, you have to roll a lot of dice. You have to roll a lot of dice. Uh, yes, the challenge for guardsman players is carpal tunnel. I mean, you got to remember, they, they do a very good job of showing how feeble the single guardsman is when you just see how many, how many dice they roll. It's really weird. L- l- listen, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of D6, I think I got like a 36 D6 pack. You would need more. I would need more. Would I would prob- need to buy like three or four of those. I think 36 those. would be fine. I don't play the guard, so, but I think 36 would be fine. I've seen, I've seen people playing... Uh, like the Necrons, and they would need to roll like 30, 60, 6. Yeah. So if that's the Necrons, mm-hmm. hold the guardsmen. Yeah, it, it, I, the feeling that I'm left with most of the gene stealers is the fact that it's not done yet. I mean, there's this there's this feeling of there's an empire within an empire, and it's this thing that has a bunch of soft power, and you feel it more than you see it, and we never, ever experience it we don't see them do there's not anything. many stories of oh my you know like you have gene stealers that have taken over planets and are contributing guardsmen at an alarming rate and in theory on paper that means at least one world has been fighting the tyranids requested reinforcements and then and gene stealers the arise <laughs> there's so much there are governors who've unwittingly spread around the gene stealers just because oh my god the workers from this planet are so efficient we need to te- get them to teach other people how they're doing this and so on and so forth and so it, there's so many things that they could be doing that they just aren't yet i've not even touched on the eldar stuff i haven't touched on the orc stuff I haven't touched on the chaos stuff because do they have their own brand of gene stealer <laughs> what do you know the gene stealers are a human problem only it's funny do you have jeans? That's funny. Are you wearing Levi's? And can they be stolen? That's all they ask. A good luck getting them on my feet. These <laughs> shoes are the worst shoes I've ever had. Yeah. Um, but that does <laughs> wrap it up for the... Ge- I can't believe you committed that hard to the bit. Um, that does wrap it up for the Jean Steelers this episode. Listen, if I had jean socks, I'd be wearing them too. Yeah. I had to dig around for the jean shirt. The jean jacket, I actually wear this because I legitimately like this piece. Uh, of course, I have blue jeans because everybody has blue jeans. But nobody expected. Nobody oh. expected. Oh, brother. That's an awful, horrendous sound. The jean shoes. <sighs> nobody expected them. Yeah. And trust me, I didn't expect them either. They were a gift. And frankly, I should have regifted them. <laughs> well, you own them now. Um, I own them now, and I can't get rid of them. I, they will probably outlast me. So be it. Well, today, though, we do have one more segment because we have mail. We have mail. Yes, we have a people. lot of mail. Oh God, is it a lot? Well, I say, oh ish. God. Okay, all right, all right. Because you you came back with a massive box that's just out of frame. I did come back with a massive box, and I don't know what's in it. So we're gonna open that while the credits roll. Because... I know what's in it because I open everything when I receive it. Because uh-huh. you know, I want. Sorry to be paranoid, but I want to be in a public place when something gets opened. <laughs> Fair enough. Jesus Christ. Um... This is a huge box. Hmm. And listen. Listen, 
I know it's in it, and I appreciate the gift, but uh, you're, uh, every viewer is going to see that the item within this box is, like, not even an eighth the size of the box. Overkill! Stuff gets thrown! I've yeah. I have worked for companies where we had to ship stuff, and I've seen what happens. And people just, like, toss, 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 toss. I don't, toss. I, and it's not like I'm... I'm Listen, FedEx, UPS, USPS workers, they have so much to do every day. And if a box is chuckable, sure, why not? You know, if it, if it seems chuck sturdy enough and I have to do a hundred of these every day, Just like chuck the I've box. seen my Amazon driver hustling, like full bore running. It's not easy. I've seen videos of Amazon drivers and it's not like it's an individual thing. I've seen yeah. several just like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just they just have packages. Think about how stores. much stuff you have shipped today, and then multiply that by every human being ever, and then add businesses into that too. And you realize there's a lot of work. I, so I don't blame them for over packaging it because if under packaging is usually the problem. I same day delivered by 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 accident because I just I was hitting the buttons and then I said, "Oh, same day delivery." And by same day delivery, I mean like I four a.m. that morning. No. I ordered this item at 11 a.m. I received it at 4 p.m. Yep. Same day delivery, baby. It's great. Um, And I didn't realize that this would not be a person in an Amazon van. This would just be a guy in their own car because somebody drives by doing like 45 in a residential, which is 25 in America doing 45 and a 25 and stopping like right in front of my house running up to my porch and then dropping the package at my door and then running back to their car I've never had that happen at my place I'll and i can tell this was their car because you know that you know that picture of Nicki minaj saluting to the flag the they had conversation, their yes. back their back windshield <laughs> was <laughs> n- n- <laughs> Nicki Minaj uh, saluting <laughs> in front of them. What a real patriot. All right, let's get this opened up. And then there's another thing there's behind another thing, me. Somewhere. Which we also know what that is. I know is, what that one is. We, we pulled it out of the, the package. Like I said, I open everything at, mm-hmm. at the USPS. Yes. Overpackaging, though, if you're going to send stuff, overpackaging, way to go. Oh, yeah. Better than under. Specifically, it's like if it's irreplaceable or something, then easily over packaging it is. Uh, you want to move re- the microphone out of the way? So you're not like no. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is Hold gonna on. be funny. Wait a minute. Oh, I mean, shove that off. I. <laughs> I won't. That's hold on. That is really cool. I love this. That I... is really cool. It is really, really cool. I love and this. And now I want to get an ultramarine helmet for the desk. Oh my god! And I sh- oh my god! You on. have a whole this, ultra shelf. There are. T- I do have a, a whole ultra shelf. I'm biased as hell. This is known. <laughs> this is known. But oh. also, I will take infinite credit because the ultramarine episode isn't even my favorite episode. Fun fact. And it wasn't even twice as long as every other episode. It could have been it worse. It could have been. I I I, I pride myself on been. being the state sponsored hype man for there, everyone. There equally. is a there is a note on the back. Oh, uh, is there? Yeah, from JQ number five thousand ish on Patreon. See you all at forty thousand followers. And now it's upside down. No, I think that's a ten. That says forty. Oh well, this has been in the mail forever then. I think he means like forty thousand Patreon followers. Oh. Well, that would be fantastic. That makes sense. There are tiny things written There on. are tiny Hold notes on. written all over it, and like some of them are so cute. I have a state-mandated hype man on my shoulder. I <laughs> visit Katachan now. Hold on. I see Trazen. Oh, there are levels to this piece. The Trazen is reaching for Kane's Alpharius was here. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Hold on. Where is Alpharius? Is here. There's so much to this. Oh, yeah. this is this is one of my favorite things I've ever had mailed. This is there's awesome. a planet blowing up in the back. Wait, I just noticed that. Did you did not I... notice the exterminatus? In no, the I totally didn't. <laughs> and like a good hype man, I'm completely ignoring that. <laughs> oh my god, this is. Hold, hold on, I need to figure out. We what will I make am sure there are some good. Here. There are some good pans of this. That's fantastic. Does this say Ken lives? Yeah, Ken, Ken lives. lives. Praise the Abbasai. Oh, that is great. Thank you so much for sending this in. I love this. I wish it would fit in a box, but I will figure out. We a need way to, to figure out that. how to fit this into a box. I don't yeah. think it can fit into a box, but I will find a way to put it. We'll figure out how to in, get it onto the worst set. case scenario. It'll be like on the way into the set because I like seeing stuff like this. <laughs> but thank you so much. This is that awesome. is so cool. 
And we also got sent in. Was this about the same person? I no, it was a different person that sent that in. It didn't come with a note. It was like literally, literally just like this in a package, and I, I don't even know who sent it because it was an Amazon package. Usually too. we get notes. Usually or there DMs are notes about it because when people send us things directly through Amazon, which mm -hmm. is a surprisingly frequent occurrence, mm -hmm. Amazon allows you to put in like a a, a, a gift note. Frequently thing. enough, it's kind of upsetting our postmaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's a good problem to have it you is great. yeah yeah <laughs> but they yeah just, i i don't know who sent this i it's I, the starcraft field manual you know I who you it. are um I, there may be a note in the book actually i haven't i haven't looked through it maybe i do love starcraft though. i have noticed i have noticed i've like flipped through this uh earlier oh that's tight i Sorry. flipped through this earlier and uh -huh. it's i thought somebody had actually gone through and notated everything mm -hmm. but the way this is i can't remember the main character's name but it's supposed to be flavored as him just going through the note uh, like every single model of unit building and uh, uh thing and just going oh here's I a thing about this love this yeah i really like this oh i'm gonna need to sit down and read through this thank you guys so much Thank for sending so, so this much. stuff in. That is fantastic. Man, that kind of makes me want to do like an art contest now. We Can should we, do we an art contest. We have a bunch of artists floating around in here. There's mm. there's a scary number of artists in our community. No, it's not, it's, scary. It's not scary at all. We have a bunch of talented people who watch us. Dare, dare I say it's a prerequisite. <laughs> I mean, clearly, it kind of is. Um, but <laughs> thank you so much for mailing this stuff in. And thank you for watching this episode. We will see you next week for something. Something. As well as the new poll. So stay tuned for that. Patreon and, will obviously get the recap as they do. Yeah. Monthly-ish. Ish. Ish seems to be our phrase. We'll, uh, we'll, we will see. We will see. <laughs> it's, has, it's prevalent enough that it says ish on the back of this. <laughs> Okay, whatever. <laughs> is that is that what our our first merch drop is going to be? Is ish. just like hyphen ish on a shirt? Jesus Christ! Thank you so much for watching this episode, and thank you for being you. <laughs>